I now realize for the first time the vital importance of being earnest. That is Oscar Wilde's best known work, The Importance of Being Earnest, which was introduced to Ho Chi Minh City's audience in 2011. The work was put on by Dragonfly Theatre Company, an ensemble of professional, non-professional, Vietnamese and foreign actors as well as directors based in Ho Chi Minh City. And you know what? That classic comedy has set the stage for realizing theatrical dreams for a couple of expats here in Vietnam. So join me in our expat living this week as we discover more about their dreams. With a growing economy, more overseas influence theatrical productions are spiriting themselves to Vietnam. Some are brought about by art troops from abroad, while others are organized by the country-based expatriates. What all these productions have in common is the desire to make them accessible to a wider audience, a collection of theater goers beyond the standard selection of only English foreigners. Likewise, Ho Chi Minh City's based Dragonfly Theatre Group aims to become a professional English language drama troupe in the city. So two foreigners, one American and one Nicaraguan, both residents of Ho Chi Minh City, have been brought together by the love of theater to represent what they hope will be the first of many plays in English for all the speakers of the language, including Vietnamese. Moving to Vietnam as a staff member in a logistics company in 2008, Jaime Suniga did not think he would do anything related to theater. Although he was a fan of stage plays before he arrived from Nicaragua, he tried acting, directing, and producing, but eventually he decided to set up his own troupe together with his friends. Vietnam has been the first place that I actually lived outside my home country. I've had several opportunities, including the one of, of be, becoming a theater director, that I didn't have had before. So that was a very important turning point. So what do you love most about stage? I love everything about the stage. I mean, the, the, the smell of the wood, everything. But the most important thing is to be in contact with the audience right there. That's something that TV or films do not have. And it's, it's a tough job because you get immediate feedback from the audience if they like it or not. Uh, they laugh or they get surprised and you can see that right there and I love that. Aaron Toronto from the US, who also star as Algenon in The Importance of Being Earnest, is one of the founding members of the Dragonfly Theatre. Studying filmmaking in the States, he moved to Vietnam eight years ago and started working as a filmmaker. But the desire to establish a theatrical troupe in English language led him to join with Jaime Suniga and Brian Reitlinger to form the Dragonfly Theatre Company. I did theatre for a long time, from when I was in middle school and through college. And I was always acting. And so I, I really have a, an acting bug for theatre. But I had to suppress it because I was going into filmmaking and I didn't really have time to go do theatre. But all of a sudden now I have an opportunity to do theatre and that passion kind of started up again. And so now I'm doing it again. So after the success of The Importance of Being Earnest and the last five years, it's time to wow the audience again by bringing on the stage one of the most famous works for children, The Little Prince. First published in 1943, 
Antoine de Saint's Exhibit's masterpiece, The Little Prince, has been translated into 210 languages and dialects and has sold over 150 million copies around the world. Though ostensibly a children's book, The Little Prince makes several profound and idealistic observations about life and human nature. The story's essence is contained in the lines as follows. One sees clearly only with the heart. What is essential is invisible to the eye. It has inspired musicals, ballets, operas, comics, graphic novels, museums, movies, TV series, and now Dragonfly's original stage adaptation. I have a very strong bond, emotional bond, with uh, The Little Prince because that was the first book that I ever read. It was a gift from my father. I've never seen a, a stage production so far. I've seen a lot of movies and I've seen a lot of videos of theater productions, operas, ballet, but I've never seen uh, it live theater. I always wanted to do The Little Prince as a director. And I, I now, we now needed a show for children. So it kind of uh, fit perfectly into our, into our uh, productions uh, plans. Jaime and Aaron are the ones who earned to put The Little Prince on stage. They adapted their play from scratch without choosing an available script. It was actually fun and surprisingly very fast. We were surprised that we could actually uh, adapt the whole book in, in, in a few weeks and, and exactly uh, hit the jackpot in terms of the vision that we wanted and we were very happy with, with all the scenes. Probably it's because we had a very clear vision of the production. We know what we, what we want out of it. So it was basically just filling in the dialogue that made sense into that. And, and I think uh, it worked because we were on the same page. I never imagined that I would be writing plays uh, or that I would be so involved in theater. But uh, I, there is a place in my heart for it. And Jaime brought me to that place again. And I'm very grateful for that. This is definitely one of the most satisfying artistic experiences that I've ever had. Even though I work in the arts, that's artistic satisfaction is something that uh, people who work in the arts are always looking for, but very rarely find, actually. Thanks to their determination from the very start, the Dragonfly Theatre Group is well on the way to conquering the hearts of the audience in Vietnam. I think we are, we are aligned on the purpose we know very well what we want to achieve with the group, the project, with each production. And I think also, uh, Aaron has been here for a lot of years, uh, more than eight, right? Yeah. yeah. And I've been here uh, around four years. So we also know Vietnam and the reality of the theater industry here. We know the theaters, we know the actors. And uh, I think those Two factors are very critical in actually producing theater here. A month before the premiere, the cast began rehearsals. Lan Phuong, a well-known Vietnamese theater and television actress, was cast to star as the Little Prince. The emotions and the, and the profound thoughts that the Little Prince has are not common for a 10-year-old kid. It's a little bit more difficult for a kid to play. At the same time, the Little Prince will be from beginning to end. He will never leave the stage. He will be on stage for two hours. And that requires a lot of professional training. Your voice, your physical skills, and, and, and we'll be traveling on the planets, we'll be, we'll be f dancing and singing. So you require a professional uh, actor for that. And considering these two things, these two elements, I don't think there's any other actor, at least that I know here living in Vietnam, that can deliver a genuine, lovable, um, uh, cute and, 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 and very bonding and engaging and, and appealing little prince and at the same time have the skills to be on stage and do the hard work that it requires to do such a production. Playing a prince is a challenging to me because first he's a prince 
and I'm a girl and he's eight years old and I'm a lot more <laughs> so uh, it's a challenging but it's interesting because um, and I enjoy experiencing to be uh, a little prince because I love this book a lot and second I love children and uh, I have third I have many roles like a a uh, small girl in my theater, so now I just um, make it a bit more manly like a boy, so, and I enjoy it, and thanks to the director and every, my partners, and it's good. Ngo Thuy Bích, an actress from the Hong Vân Theater, played the roles. She gained valuable experience from Jaime's direction. To the audience, right? Like, I talk too much, don't I? I, I, I drink too much water for breakfast, I do this, a playful part of Rose is that uh, when uh, when the little prince pour the water over me, I should be, you know, the feel of the water uh, goes to me and it's cold and and he show me how to react to that. Yeah, that's that's very tiny uh, details that uh, I didn't pay attention to. Yeah, he's, he's very detail-oriented, and I love that. Costuming for a children's play is important, and Jaime is very careful to choose a designer from the University of Architecture to take the reins. Ở kịch của Jaime, sự kết hợp màu sắc rất là dữ dội. Thì đó cũng là chính là cái bản chất của cá tính của đạo diễn và những cái mà Jaime làm trong kịch hay là thảo luận với mình trong thiết kế thời trang, trong thiết kế trang phục cho kịch thì nó luôn luôn đem đến sự bùng nổ, là sự sáng tạo. Mọi người sẽ phải bất ngờ, wow, tại sao nó lại như vậy? Tại sao nó không giống như những gì mà tôi đã được đọc hoặc tôi tưởng tượng? Jaime is passionate about his vision of amalgamating Vietnamese and Western theater. He's committed to making the Dragonfly Theater Company the flagship for the new era of theater in Ho Chi Minh City. More and more people are learning English in Vietnam. More and more people are opening the doors for things that are different. They're not looking inside in the traditional, uh, traditional artistic forms. They want to experiment. When that generation becomes adults, then that whole generation will want access to English theater. So we are, so to speak, pioneering, but there's room for much more in the future. There is now, and it can only be more and more in the future. That's for sure. very nervous and sometimes I feel my heart beats a bit so hard. All my friends will all try my best and give you the best product that we can. Hope that you'll love it. Performed in English with Vietnamese subtitles projected on the site, the debut performance was an eye-catching and magical experience for those who attended. Director Jaime himself appeared in three roles, the fox, the lamb lighter, and the tippler, while co-writer Aaron appeared as the aviator. Other than those two roles, the rest of the cast were Vietnamese. The most devoted fans of Antoine de saint Exupéry's classic beloved children's tale were not disappointed by this new version of the novel. Tại vì rất là thích quyển truyện này và khi mà nó được dựng thành kịch đó thì rất là hào hứng để đi xem và không ngờ là ông Jamie có thể nhận được một cái một cái kịch bản một chuyện mà sát với hương tác như vậy. The script stayed close to Saint Exupéry's storyline, but also included popular reinterpretation to surprise the audience. The original king, for example, was replaced by the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. I like the 
Elvis Presley event um, because it was quite funny. And I like the businessman because he owned the stars. So that was quite funny too. Mỗi con nhân vật đều có những cái đặc điểm và những cái hay riêng và đặc biệt trong đó là cái nhân vật uh, hoàng tử bé là một cái nhân vật mà mình thích nhất. Uh, it's very funny. I think the audience is up and laughing so that's good. The Dragonfly production also incorporated more recent music. Tracks from Lady Gaga, Pink Floyd, Radiohead and others helped the show gain traction. It's a classical piece and it was amazing that it was make a mixture of modern music and the script was rewritten. So, uh, it's a totally new combination, especially I was surprised with Lady Gaga music and that was the biggest surprise for me. I wanted to surprise with other characters like the king, where it's not the normal pompous king with a crown and, and, and uh, what you would imagine normally and how he has been represented for so long. But we changed the character into Elvis Presley to represent a little bit of our pop culture. The same way with the snake, we changed it to inspiring Lady Gaga. And the fox, we had a little bit of, of, of glamour of those musicals from the 60s and 70s like uh, Singing in the Rain and all these dances like uh, Gene Kelly and Fred Astaire. So, so it, it has a little bit of everything something that you will be familiar to and things that you will be entirely surprised to keep it rich and, and interesting and, and colorful. In keeping with the origin story, the messages were meaningful for children and adults alike. So me and all my friends, all my colleagues feel amazing because at last we did it and we made something beautiful and we, um, we could make the audience feel what we want them to feel. By the end of the play, the prince has achieved his dream to return to his love, and the cast achieved their dreams of bringing something beautiful to today's art scene in Ho Chi Minh City. In Vietnam, one of the most important occasions of a person's life is the wedding ceremony. Different regions of the country see different ways of celebrating a wedding. So in this episode of Vietnam at a glance, we're going to take a look at the wedding ceremony of the Hmong people. It all starts from here, the bride capture. A 19-year-old Hmong comes to his lover's room to kidnap her. Because 18-year-old May is in love with Nu, she has already shown him where her room is. Then, they both go to Nu's house. After the capture, May lives in Nu's house as a family member. Nu's family is making rice cakes to bring to May's parents' house. When they arrive, Nu's mother tells May's parents how her son catch her May. And now her family accepts May to be Nu's bride. This man and his assistant are the matchmakers for the wedding. He is invited by Nu's father. The matchmaker must be a relative or a close neighbor of the groom's family, understand her own customs, be at least 35 years old and married, and have healthy children. The matchmaker then arranges a meeting with May's family to discuss the wedding date. One day before the wedding, 
The groom's family prepares a wedding meals and gifts. The bride's family requires the wedding gifts, mostly pork, rice, and wine. Nu's family also holds a party for the groom's delegation and those who prepare the wedding meals. At a selected time in the morning, the groom's delegation starts. The group includes the marchmakers, Nu's uncle, Nu, and the groom's man. The groom's delegation takes a rest on the way to pray to forest spirits. The matchmaker is the one who asks the spirits to support the wedding. After the matchmaker asks the bride's family for permission to leave, the delegation exits the house. On the way back, they take a rest to worship the forest spirits too. But May and bridesmaids eat separately. When the delegation arrives at Snoop's house, his family invites friends and relatives to the party to share their happiness. During the feast, no pepper dish can be served, for it is believed to make the bride and groom's marriage life bitter. People drink and share happiness with the newlyweds until late in the evening. Welcome to Time Out this week. Continuing with the topic of wedding, our guide Tang Wen is about to attend an engagement ceremony in Hanoi and review some special features of Vietnamese wedding culture. Hello everyone, I'm Thang Van and nice to see you again in this new edition of Time Out. Hanoi in this season has the perfect weather for people to get married. That's why we also call the wedding season. And today please join with me to a Vietnamese traditional engagement ceremony to know more about Vietnamese wedding culture. On the engagement day, the bride will stay in her room and wait for the groom to come to pick her up. lễ dạng ngõ thì là để gia đình nhà trai đến nhà gái mình đặt vấn đề để cho các cháu đi lại nên là lễ ăn hỏi để gia đình nhà trai có những lễ đến xin phép gia đình cô dâu để làm lễ cưới làm lễ cho hai cháu lễ cưới là để cho các cháu thành vợ thành chồng I'm not standing at the bride's home and we are all waiting for the groom's family to come When the groom's family come, the groom's man will deliver offering trays to the bridesmaids. 
Normally, they will prepare an odd number of trays, such as five, seven, or nine. Those trays include betel and areca, fruits, candied lotus seeds, green rice cakes, cigarettes, and wine bottles. nay là ngày lành tháng tốt bên họ nhà trai có cười giàu có lễ ăn hỏi đến để hỏi cháu chúng tôi thì tôi xin thay mặt họ nhà gái xin nhận lễ của họ nhà trai và xin phép là hai bà thông gia lên để mở lễ để lên để lễ tổ tiên ạ. After opening the trays, the groom will go to the bride's room to lead her downstairs. Then the bride will pure tea to offer to the groom's family. Finally, both the bride and the grooms and the bride's family will light incense to honor their ancestors. Yes, it's also the end of the show now and we hope that you are now understand more about the Vietnamese engagement culture. Let's wait until the next segment to know how the groom and the bride are going to celebrate their wedding. And now I have to say goodbye from Hanoi. And that has been our edition of Expat Living for this week. I hope you do enjoy every bit of it. But before we say goodbye, just one reminder. If you come across any show ideas or if you would like to provide us with your feedback on anything you've seen here, just send your email to our email address as always, expatliving at vtv.vn. Thank you and until next time.